There is a perception, amongst some, not all, that bikepacking is an inherently lightweight pursuit, that you have to sacrifice all comfort, pack only the barest of essentials to enable you to maintain this ultra aerodynamic, streamlined, endurance race ready profile, smashing out 120 kilometers a day between nights spent cold soaking sawdust in a bivy bag. This isn't true, of course. The more trips you do, the more you fine tune your gear to match the kind of rides that you want to ride. And for me, I ride my bike to enjoy myself. And not type two fun, you know, I want to actually enjoy it. Every minute of it, while I'm there, on the bike and off the bike. And so, I've started to carry a few luxuries. And this video is going to be a look at five items that have become regulars on my packing list, but that are either unnecessary or could be achieved in a much less extravagant kind of way. Stick around till the end as well and we'll do a sixth, slightly more nebulous and philosophical item concept bonus piece maybe. Let's get into the list. This is my DD Hammocks Small Super Light Tarp. It is 2.8 by 1.5 meters and it has 19 attachment points, which means that it's incredibly versatile. It's easy to pitch. You could throw it up in a few minutes between two trees. Um, if you don't have trees, you can use your bike as the primary support. Similarly, you can use your tent, you can use bushes, posts, trekking poles, whatever you've got. The world of tarp pitching technique is, is a deep subject to get into, which I'm not an expert in, but you'll be able to pitch it. And this means that whether you're caught out by the weather mid-ride or you're pitching in the rain at the end of a long day, you can use this to make a really good, usable, sheltered space at camp, somewhere to cook, to eat, to get changed out of wet gear, to tinker with the bike, just to sit and not be in the rain. The ultimate luxury. Um, I haven't had this for very long. I only got it a few months ago. Um, it came out on its first proper adventure with me and Alan on the Second City Divide. I will put links to that series if you haven't seen it already up in the card and down in the description go check it out that was a fantastic ride this tarp got used and it was appreciated and it will come out with me from now on on every ride where there's even a sniff of a hint of a possibility of rain because for the level of luxury that it adds the sacrifice of carrying it is minimal i mean it packs down absolutely tiny the tarp on its own only weighs 290 grams. It fits into the top of the fork bag where I keep my tent anyway. So basically I don't know it's there until I need it, which is absolutely spot on. Um, I bought my new for 55 quid. They come up on eBay from time to time for maybe 45 quid if you're not in a mad rush. Yeah, it's brilliant. Absolutely love it. Um, Probably worth noting, some of you out there might be tarp campers, in which case a lightweight tarp isn't a luxury, it's an absolute necessity. So you might be interested to know that DD Hammocks also do a bike packing specific tarp. It's a little bit bigger, it's a little bit heavier, it's a little bit more expensive. It's a kind of kite shaped design and it's specifically meant to be pitched using your bike as the primary support. I haven't tried it, I just mention this conversationally because I know it exists. Um, I will put links down below to the super light small I have and to the bike packing specific. Yeah, go and have a look. Uh, if anyone from DD Hammock stumbles across this video and would like me to do um, a review of the bike packing specific one, I'll be more than happy to try it out. Give us a shout. Um, but yeah, DD Hammock's super light small tarp, a really nice living area extension to every campsite. It's a winner. So with your lovely tarp pitched, you search around for somewhere to sit that isn't 
cold, wet, lumpy, but there's nothing. So you gingerly lower your mountain battered buttocks onto the least spiky looking log and give in to the dampness. Or at least that used to be the way until I got my Helinox Chair Zero. Now this is a folding camping chair like a million others, but it seems to be the smallest and the lightest offering out there. It's definitely not the cheapest option out there. They're currently going for 135 quid new. Um, I was able to get mine on eBay for just under 100, so a little bit of a saving there. Um, I was a little bit apprehensive about getting it because I'd read a few reviews of people saying that it's actually not that comfortable to sit in. But having used it a fair bit, I can say I kind of understand why people might say that, but I don't think it's a fair accusation to level at this product. Um, so some people said that it's too narrow. I think you'd have to have pretty wide hips for it to be too narrow. I don't have a problem with that at all. My main issue is with the forward and backward balance of it. So if you sit and you slump right back, like I'm doing now, it kind of, your bum tends to slip out and want to dump onto the ground. Equally, if you lean too far forwards, it can overbalance on the front legs and tip you out as well. Um, this is arguably not a bad thing. It makes getting up from it nice and easy, which is good if you're an old man like me. Um, but I guess it just means that maybe you can't sort of lounge in this chair like you might in an armchair or even one of the big full-size camping chairs. But that said, this isn't an armchair or a full-size camping chair and it's not trying to be. What it's trying to be is light, very quick to pitch, very quick to break down, sturdy and comfortable to sit in for, you know, a few hours around a campfire, an hour at lunch or whatever. It does those things absolutely splendidly. And as with the tarp, it breaks down so small and so light. I think it's 490 grams. It's hardly a sacrifice to carry it. Um, I haven't exactly worked out where it's going to live in my packing regime. Um, I think it will probably just strap to the top platform of my rack, to be honest. Um, it will find its place, but it's definitely coming out with me because it really is. To have something to sit in that's dry, that's comfortable, something to lean back against at the end of a long day on the saddle, yeah, that really is luxury to compare with the tarp. Helinox Chair Zero, again, I'll stick links down below, go check it out. It is a stunning piece of kit. So in the shelter of your tarp, sat in your lovely comfy chair, the next luxury is definitely gonna be some hot food. Um, for me, that means getting out the Trangia alcohol burner. That's my stove of choice. And so that needs um, a support, it needs a pot stand, it needs a wind guard. Trangia do an offering for this, um, but it's quite bulky. Or you can search online on Amazon or whatever and you'll find dozens of third party solutions ranging in price, practicality, quality, etc. I mean, you can make your own old coat hangers and beer cans literally it's that easy but i use the firebox nano titanium um i'm not going to do a proper review of this now because i've actually already done a video all about the, the firebox nano um, so if you want all the nitty gritty i will link to that video in the corner and down in the description go check that out but brief overview it's, um, it's a support for the Trangia burner, holds it in three different positions really nicely. It's also a pot stand and something of a wind guard. Um, you can use it with those solid like um, paraffin fuel pellets if you like those. It works with some gas burner heads and it's also a little fire pit. So if you're camping somewhere where you're allowed to have open fires, it works as a twig stove and you can just fuel it that way so it's very versatile 
Um, it isn't the cheapest solution by any means. Uh, it's 80 quid I think I paid for it, but it only weighs 85 grams and it all packs down into this lovely little case which doubles as a stand and an ash pan. So it's just a really well thought out, well engineered piece of gear. I mean, it comes on every single trip with me. I absolutely love it. I use it all the time. It's brilliant. Um, probably worth giving a shout out to its bigger brother, the five inch stove, which I also have. And the only reason it's not on this list of luxuries is because I haven't actually taken it out on any trips. It's just a little bit bigger, a little bit heavier, still eminently bike packable. I just haven't done it, but that is big enough to have a proper little fire in. You can grill on it, you can barbecue sausages on the top. If you can find a way to bring the billy can with you, which would be heavy packing, then you can bake bread in it, you can smoke fish. I mean, that really would be luxury. But yeah, for me, this is an extravagant solution to a simple problem. Firebox Nano Titanium X Case Edition. Absolutely love it top stuff. Links down below. Check them out. Okay, a brief note from the sponsors here. Normally I would do this at the end of the video, but I'm sort of experimenting with the format at the moment. So here I am at the halfway point, just to say that I'm kind of trying harder than normal to, to push the channel at the moment. Um, Regular viewers will know that I'm currently unemployed. I didn't get fired or made redundant. I voluntarily quit my job for a girl, for an adventure, for a midlife crisis. Um, check the video out if you don't know the details of that. But while I don't ever expect this channel to be like my primary income, I am trying to make the most of it while I've got the time to do so. And so if you're enjoying this video, please hit the like button, consider subscribing if you're not already, and leave a comment. Um, you know, I'm genuinely really interested to know what is it that you take on trips with you that other people would say is too heavy or unnecessary? What do you think of my choices so far, you know, as far as luxury items go? I'd really like to hear um, your thoughts on all of this. If you're really, really enjoying the channel, um, you can hit the thanks button underneath this video to help support videos like this. You can follow the link in the description to my Ko-fi page where you can donate one off, you can donate on a monthly basis or if available you can buy a set of my stickers, a wooden spoon or other whittled implement if I've made any recently. All proceeds go to help the channel, all support, very very gratefully received. Um, yeah, it really, really is. That's that. Let's get back to this old list here. Item number four on the list, Ombras armless sunglasses. Now, I think most of us here will agree that on a multi-day bike trip, a good pair of sunglasses is a necessity and not a luxury. And I've had a lot of pairs of sunglasses. I think on average, they probably last about five or six months. Um, I take them off, I put them in my pocket, I sit on them, snap the arms. I put them in my bar bag next to a bunch of keys or some loose change, scratch the lenses beyond all recognition. I put them up on top of my head, ride under some low branches, hit a bumpy section of trail, they're gone forever. I'm, I'm incapable of keeping a pair of sunglasses intact and on my person for more than a few months. It's a genetic thing, I think, I can't help it. Um, I even thought that maybe if I spent a bit more money on a pair that I'd look after them better. So I spent, I think, 70 quid on a pair and they lasted three and a half months before I destroyed the lens against some keys. And I'd seen Ombras reviewed very positively on bikepacking.com, I think. And I really liked the idea. I really liked the design and the style of them. I was not that keen to spend 120 quid on something I thought I'd probably lose or break. But then these came up on eBay. They don't come up on eBay very often, in the UK at least, but I got these for 70 quid. And that must be two years ago now. And I've still got them. 
they're still intact. I absolutely love them, I really, really do. Um, I was a little bit apprehensive that they might not be that comfy. I thought you might have to uh, tighten the lanyard more than was comfortable to keep them solid on your face, but you really, really don't. The lanyard is just there to stop them flopping forwards off your face. All the balance on your nose is just done by the frame design, basically. Um, the, the lanyard is adjusted using these toggles. It's a, basically a double fisherman knot, but done with little plastic toggles. So you've got infinite adjustability within the, the range. Um, so you don't have to worry about the arms being too short or being too long or anything. And once they're set the way you like them, they stay, they don't slip or anything like that. The lenses are really good, decent polarized lenses, really good coverage across your eyes. They're super comfy. You can wear them all day without any like digging into your nose. They're more comfortable than my standard glasses, if I'm entirely honest. And the nice thing is that when you take them off, I just drop them down around my neck and they hang there. They don't get sat on, they don't get scratched. Two years, that's a record for me. It's an absolute record. Um, the only negative point, if I wanted to find a negative for the sake of balance, would be that you can't really use them one-handed, or rather, I can't use them one-handed. So if the lanyard like this is, I want to put them on when I'm riding or I'm filming a video, it's quite fiddly to, to do one-handed. I mean, you can sort of do it. You wouldn't want to do it while you were riding your bike, though. So you tend to have to stop and go two-handed, um, which is very, very easy. It's not a massive problem. I'm just looking for negatives so this doesn't feel like too much of a biased video. I love them to the point that if I did manage to lose them, I wouldn't hesitate to shell out the full price to get another pair to replace them straight away. Ombras armless sunglasses. I'll stick some links down below. Check them out. They, they really are the best bike packing glasses I've ever encountered. And so to the final item on this list, and I'll be honest, I hadn't really planned this far. I figured I'd just freestyle it. So, you know, off the top of my head, uh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't attempt humor when Alan's not involved, I guess. Um, it's my hat. It's an icon of the channel to those of you who watch regularly. And I think, Many of us would agree, similar to the sunglasses, that depending on where and when you're riding, a good wide-brimmed hat is a necessity. Uh, it keeps the rain off, keeps the sun off. It's something that you can buy online in any high street, in any market in the world, probably for almost no money. But I really like the Tilly brand. Um, this is my second Tilly hat. The first one was sadly lost on the Badger Divide. Um, if you haven't seen the series on that, I'll put links um, up in the corner and down in the description. Go check that out, because that was a fantastic trip. One of the best routes I've ever ridden, I think. Except for the fact that on day one, it ate my Tilly, which I'd had for 10 years at least, had been on a lot of good adventures with me, that one. But as I said with the Ombras glasses previously, I got home and it was an absolute no-brainer to shell out for a new one. Because this will last longer than me if I don't lose it. It wasn't cheap. I paid 90 quid for this, I think. This is the all-weather version. Um, so it's a little bit more waterproof than the one I had previously. It's just a really, really quality well-designed, well-built product. This has been soaked in the rain. I've been in the sea with this on. It's been out in the sun, the snow, everything. You can stuff it in a crumpled ball into the bottom of a pannier, wet. Take it out, stick it on your head. It will get its shape back and be almost as good as new. Um, it's got little poppers on the side so you can wear it like a cool kind of cowboy or you can go full Indiana Jones because it is Indiana Jones, not amateur botanist, which is equally as cool, but you know, da, 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 da. it's very comfortable. Again, something you can wear all day. It's great in the sun. It's great in the rain. It's just, it's just a quality luxury item. You don't have to spend this much money on a wide brimmed hat, but if you've got the money, buy a Tilly, don't lose it. 
and you'll be able to give this to your children and your grandchildren you know it's, it's that that good a build not much else to say about it really it's a hat and so that's um that's the end of the list those are my five luxury items what do you think but we're not quite at the end because i promised you a sixth bonus item a nebulous concept piece which i will of course um, deliver if you frequent the bikepacking subreddit or any forums probably on the subject you will have come across people asking the question what do you do when you're at camp when you're not pedaling especially people who ride solo for longer periods of time what do you do? Do you just sit there? And a lot of people say that this, these moments at camp, this is when loneliness sets in, homesickness, anxiety, boredom even, some people say. And so item six could be this. This is my spoon whittling kit. Or it could be this. This is a sketchbook. Or maybe it's a journal. Basically, it's whatever you need to fight off those negative feelings if you think you're going to suffer from them. Because bikepacking is not just about bikes and about packing. It's not just about pedaling. It's about being out in the world. It's about enjoying the stillness and the silence, which is a luxury that you've been given that many people don't experience enough of and there are going to be times when it's nice to pitch early sit somewhere beautiful like this and enjoy it do a sketch whittle a spoon write a poem make a journal entry they don't have to be any good they're not for anyone else they're for you so that you can make something along with the memories you can make something physical on this trip a souvenir, a reminder, something to look back on in years to come that will trigger memories that you would have otherwise forgotten. Something to take home. Now, I'm a big proponent of enjoying the silence as much as the movement. You know, enjoy the trees as much as the road. It's not all about the bike. It's about engaging with the world and I don't think there's any better way of doing that than sitting in a comfy chair sheltered by a lovely tarp dinner cooking on a nice little firebox probably wearing your hat and your nice sunglasses and whittling a spoon enjoy it every minute of it because if you're out there and you're doing that you're one of the lucky ones in the world you really are you want to appreciate every second of it bike packing is not about hardship it's about all of this and that's that that's my little philosophical nugget for the end um as i said before i'm really interested to hear what all your luxury items are on your trips um to my monthly Kofi supporters these fine folk here thank you so much you are my biggest luxury you really are um I, I don't know what to say as always so i say something stupid but it's from the heart stupid from the heart everyone else who made it to the end thank you very much for watching i really appreciate it um i'm gonna get packed up now head home get myself some food See you all on the next one. Bye now.